Hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and this is every single January uh, 2023 release from Kino Lorber and Kino Lorber's partner labels. So we've got Cohen Media here. Where uh, there's a railroad video title here. If you enjoy these Kino Lorber videos, these complete comprehensive looks at everything coming out from Kino Lorber each month, please subscribe. Please give thumbs ups. Uh, that encourages this content to get found in that weird YouTube algorithm and to then get promoted so other people see this. Uh, and uh, I would be really grateful for you if you do that. I'm also really grateful to Kino Lorber for sending this over to me in the first place to share with you. So big thanks to Kino Lorber. Let's jump right into it. Uh, we're going to kick it off with things that we've already talked about if you're a subscriber. Uh, the Italian Job on 4K. I've already done a full review for the. I prioritized a 4K movie review for The Italian Job. Uh, so I'm not going to repeat myself. Go check out that video. I've, it's popped up right here and it's in the description of this video. Um, great movie. Absolute classic. I prefer this very much so to the remake version. And then there's something about this that is uh, really uh, of its time. You know, that's the thing that you can remake movies. You can take movies out of their context and, you know, the, the, now that they're IP, right? But there's something about the right movie, the right place, the right time. It's that zeitgeist that it taps into. And I don't think you can replicate that. I don't think that it's something you can bottle and save for later. I think that is what makes pop culture so magical in the first place. Uh, the same can be said for the very first Death Wish on 4K. Once again, I've done a full dedicated review, uh, 4K movie review for Death Wish. I said everything I have to say about Death Wish in that video. You know what? Let me show you guys the alternate cover art here. Uh, this is the Blu-ray and the 4K. But again, I don't want to tell you. I want you to go check out those videos because I, I can talk about those there in a way that I can't really talk about uh, talk about them here because we've got so much ground to cover. I am really pleased that both of these movies are getting attention again. Uh, I'm also really pleased to be talking about the missing, the missing in action trilogy. You guys, this is a box set. Now here's the thing. Kino Lorber is releasing these in this complete box set or individually with uh, separate slipcases for each of the three movies. If you buy them on their own, the first pressing has the slipcase, right? The slipcover. Uh, I don't have those. They didn't send those to me. They sent me this, which is honestly what I would prefer anyway. I like the idea of one comprehensive box set. Now, I have uh, all, th all these movies already on Blu-ray, but I don't. I didn't pull them because uh, I don't know if you can see. I don't think you can see. I'm in the process of doing a lot of organizing. I'm, I'm getting things off the shelf that I don't really want on the shelf anymore to make room for things like this. You know, the, the, I'm at a point now with my collection and my collecting habits where I'm like, that doesn't need to be displayed. That can go uh, somewhere else. And I'll talk about that later. This isn't the place for that, but that's coming soon. Uh, and so I'm not even sure where my missing in action movies are, but uh, here's the first film. Uh, the 1984 film, brand new HD master from a 4K scan of the 35mm original camera negative. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, uh, the first two of these, Mission a Missing in Action 1 and 2, are new 4K scans of the original 35mm camera negative. Uh, Missing in Action 3 is a 2K scan of the original 35mm uh, interpositive, not the negative, the interpositive. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and answer questions before they come. So that means that both of these could, in theory, one day get a 4K release. They have chosen not to do that at this time. If I get a chance to ask about that, I will. Um, but for now, uh, these are our Blu-rays. And I think this is great because we've got, listen, this is the first one. So the first one has an audio commentary with the director, an interview with a screenwriter, the theatrical trailer. The second one has an audio, new audio commentary by director Lance Hool, moderated by Daniel Kramer. Uh, and the third one has an audio commentary by action film historians Mike Leader and Arne Venema. Now, those guys pop up on a lot of like Hong Kong cinema, a lot of martial arts movies. In fact, a lot of the stuff that Arrow's putting out and 88 Films too, I believe, uh, lean heavily into those guys because they are action movie experts and they do a really fun commentary. So these are the three missing in action movies. with uh, some really nice special features. And there's no 
no alternate artwork here. But I I love the I, I love this box set. This is really great. That's this like I said, this is why I'm making room on my shelf for you know, a lot of it's DVDs, and I, I love DVDs because DVD was the last stop for a lot of stuff. Um, people that think that, you know, I see a lot when I talk about DVDs, people go like, ooh, DVD. Well, those are the people that don't even realize how much they haven't seen yet. I hope that they do one day. But uh, I had to make room for the stuff, you know, like, I don't want to get rid of them, but they don't need to be, you know, displayed. So this is uh, a release near and dear to my heart. This is The Lady from Shanghai, which is one of my, I'm going to say this is a top five film noir pick for me. Uh, you know, I love film noir. I talk about it as often as I can. I have a video just about film noir. What is film noir? And uh, I have no doubt that someone out there is watching this and they say, ah, that's not film noir. Every time I talk about film noir on this channel, someone says that's not film noir. And then they want to get scholarly and academic and start dropping, you know, well, the French philosopher of Zorko in 1962 said that film noir was more a collective of style and ideas. And uh, every time film, film noir is one of the most gate kept genres in all of cinema. So, I am super excited about this release because it is loaded. By the way, first of all, look at this amazing this shot in the film. Uh, one of my favorite movie shots of all time. It's like a sort of a hall of mirrors with this Orson Welles. Listen, Orson Welles, Rita Hayworth, top billing, Orson Welles. Uh, I love everything about this movie. And they have got, we got an audio commentary by film historian Imogen Sarah Smith, an audio commentary by novelist and critic Tim Lucas. A, this is the third audio commentary by Peter Bogdanovich. Uh, a conversation with Peter Bogdanovich from 2000 and three comments from film histor film noir historian Eddie Muller. Hopefully Eddie Muller's presence is enough for some people, though people challenge Eddie, Eddie, Muller, Eddie Muller too. They go, like, hey, Eddie Muller, that's not noir. And he's like, okay, okay, all right. Uh, this is a wonderful, uh, people ask me sometimes, actually more and more people are saying, hey, where should I start with film noir? And I'm going to say out of the past, double indemnity, um, I'm going to say Detour because that's, that's a great one. And that's, uh, you know, Ulmer Independent, shot outside the studio system, sort of a poverty row thing. Uh, and, and this is always one of the ones that I recommend because it's just so accessible. And it has the things that I love about noir, but it's also, uh, it's just so, it is just really accessible. Uh, I believe there's even a, yes, there is a third piece of artwork here. So we have this artwork this artwork and this artwork. The only way this could be any better is if this was a 4K. Uh, that's the only way this could be any better. So I'm really excited about this. I, I adore the film, obviously. Now here we're getting into some stuff I don't know a whole lot about. So Programmed to Kill, it's got Sandal Bergman in it, who I like from Code and the Barbarian. And what is the name? She. I think Kino Lorber put she out years ago it's sort of a post-apocalyptic warriors of the wasteland kind of a movie and sandal bergman is uh the she is the titular she and so i'm really curious about this this is a um let's see trans world entertainment and it's um i mean this this like it is what it is right it's very clear that this is uh, a specific kind of action genre movie uh, it's got a new 2K scan from the 35mm interpositive. Audio commentary with director Alan Holtzman, moderated by filmmaker Douglas Hosdale. Uh, Ho Hosdale and interview. This is, here's the thing: interview with a screenwriter Robert Short. Pin in that. Put a star on that. Uh, alternate opening credits. This is the reversible. It has you know the the slip cover. So if you miss, if you're watching this in 2026 and you miss the slip cover, you still have the art. It's reversible. Um, companion okay so kind of follow me here ghost warrior this is empire pictures this is charles band well it's an albert band okay albert band international productions incorporated and empire pictures and uh harkham productions incorporated presents ghost warrior um let's see from an original idea by charles band uh, albert band was charles band's dad and he made uh, he directed i bury the living which i adore uh, with Richard Boone, for Have Gun, Will Travel, and, you know, a lot of great films, but Have Gun, Will Travel, especially for the 50s westerns, man. Uh, so, 
Okay, why am I talking about that? Interview with special makeup effects artist Robert Short. Interview with screenwriter Robert Short. Special effects artist Robert Short. Screenwriter Robert Short. Robert Short was a jet is a jack of all trades. Uh, he worked on the makeup on Beetlejuice, and he um, writes. So we got looking him up. Look him up on IMDb. We got writer credits. We got acting credits. We got uh, you know makeup credits. All kinds of stuff. So. These are, this is sort of like your Robert Short double feature here. So I just think that's really interesting. Also an audio commentary by Brandon Bentley and Mike Leader uh, and a theatrical trailer. Shadow. So uh, different artwork here. I have not seen this. Though I'm familiar with the people involved, I have not seen this. So I'm really excited about, you know, I make these videos once a month, right? And it's usually like two dozen, three dozen titles. And there's only so much you can watch. Before, so I always prioritize the 4Ks and stuff, uh, and the box sets and things like that. But then, like, as we get further down into the stack, it's really just like the curiosities for me that I'm like, I don't know what this is, or maybe I do know what it is, but I haven't caught up with it yet. It's so, like these two, I haven't seen them, but I'm really excited because I know they're up my alley. You start talking about like, 1986 Empire Pictures, that's Charles Band at like the height of his. This is when he's meeting with studios, right? This is distributed by MGM. And you look at where Charles Band is now, you look at Full Moon and all these things, but in the 80s, he was working with studios, um, MGM here as well. So it was like exploitation movies on a on a large scale. Of course, now we have you know, like Fast and the Furious is an exploitation movie and uh, you know basically everything that people go see now, because they don't go see art house films and they don't go see adults talking. They go see the big popcorn movies. Those are exploitation movies, but they have such big budgets that they killed the kind of exploitation movies that I like to see, the kind of exploitation movies that people made uh, on kind of a shoestring and then got video distribution or whatever. Like that's what's really interesting to me. So uh, I'm really excited about those. This is another one I have not seen. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. Is the Asphyx? The Asphyx? Asphyx? I'm going to say it's the Asphyx. Uh, this is blending elements of gothic horror with more contemporary ingredients of steampunk. The Asphyx has emerged from obscurity to become a cult favorite of the sci-fi fantasy genre. Uh, we've got audio commentary by Kim Newman and Stephen Jones, which they do great work. Uh, it's a 1972 film. I think that I was going to say, does this have alternate artwork? It does not. Uh, who has seen this? And what do you think about it? Next up is uh, No Mercy. This is Richard Gere, Kim Basinger. Very great, sexy. Richard Gere is, uh, you know, this is after an officer and a gentleman. What year is it? 86. Kim Basinger is gorgeous uh i don't want to reduce her to just her physical beauty she's great is a great actress as well she's got this kind of like down home southern bell kind of a thing that i really connect as a southern boy i really connect with um but richard gear is pretty great in this too and this is um this just came out within the last two years i'm gonna say maybe within the last one year for mill creek entertainment they did it as part of their uh their retro vhs slipcover stuff their you know their their range of slipcover VHS style slipcovers, so I guess that they have lost this possibly because it is now coming from uh, Kino Lorber from it's a Columbia picture so it's Sony. Um, it's good news because hey I think that other one was a bare bones release. You'll have to go back and check uh, and see because I, 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 it's it's on the channel somewhere. Maybe some of you guys even remember because you some of you some of you guys seem to have photographic memories. Uh, but uh, this, I think it was bare bones. This has fire with fire interview with actor uh, Jerome Crab and uh, the theatrical trailer. So anyway, did this? I don't think this. Yeah. Make sure there's nothing. Usually, if it has reversible art, I've already reversed it so that I can do the reveal on camera. So I'm gonna be like, and ta da, ta da, is this your card? That's what I. That's what I want to go for. Uh, here's another one that I am really excited about. So this is Lee Marvin and Sergeant Riker, uh, 1968. So we're around Dirty Dozen era, which if you like Lee Marvin's the best. Uh, he was great in the cowboy pictures that he was in. He was great in the noir films that he was in. And then in the sixties, he had this whole run as like the lead guy, tough military man. Uh, reference point blank to anyway, brand new 2k master. Um, 
and it's got an audio commentary by film historian filmmaker Daniel Kramer, which is a great fit for him because he's really uh, this just this is a good fit, and I'm excited to check this out. So, if you've seen it, let's talk about it. Here's another one that we should talk about. This is a Warning Shot, David Jansen Warning Shot. Now, not too long within the last three four months. In fact, here it is. Uh, Imprint out of Australia released this and their presentation has an audio commentary by Howard S. Berger and Steve Mitchell from 2022. This has an audio commentary by film historian and filmmaker Steve Mitchell. But it, oh, so and uh, and Howard S. Berger. OK, I, it was on two separate lines. Uh, so I assume this is the exact same commentary. Uh, 1080p presentation from Paramount Pictures. Same thing here. So why am I bringing this up? Because I get asked a lot when I cover imprints or uh, Kino Lorber stuff. Like, you know, hey, is this going to... Specifically when I talk about imprint, people are like, is this my last chance at this? And I'm like, well, if it's coming from Paramount, which this is, Paramount's going to want to license to as many people as they can. Kino Lorber now has a deal with Paramount. So we're getting stuff like this. Uh, Imprint is an Australian product for an Australian audience. And the fact that they don't region lock things means everybody anywhere can buy those and import them. But it doesn't mean that those movies aren't coming to their region. And so I want to be clear about that. Like, I don't know. Well, I, I, sometimes I do. I don't know what's coming all the time. But Paramount, it is in Paramount's best interest to get their catalog in as many different places as they can. Right? So... Uh, this is good news for people that missed out on the imprint version or did not want to import, didn't want to pay the, the price, the conversion, all that stuff. This is great news because this means uh, an American audience now has access to this movie at a, an affordable price without importing. So I think it's we're going to see more and more of this, I believe. Uh, all right, we're leaning into, we're getting into the more art, art artsy stuff here. And we're going to talk about uh, Maigre, Maigre. I there's I can't, I can't win. No matter how I pronounce this, someone's gonna be like, "That's not right." Uh, Magre is what I'm gonna say. Uh, season two, which is this is the BBC series, and there were they've already so one season one came out. I don't remember if it was last month or the month the month before that. Um, and they've already said that season three. This is season two. Season three comes out at the end of February. Season four comes out in March. So. It's the best you could ask for. It's like boom, 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 month after month. Um, it is the British adaptation of the classic uh, novels, the you know the the detective stories. Um, long awaited and unseen anywhere for decades. George Simenon's Migre is the definitive adaptation of the world famous novels. This BBC television. Here's what I want to talk to you guys about. So it's 13 episodes. Uh, it's been remastered in high definition from the original film elements. And it's featured here in its original full for, uh, full screen presentation. Bonus features uh, Canadian Christmas intros. What's that about? Um, on here's what I love about this. On the these are they're like stage plays, right? If you the BBC in the 60s was it 62, 61 to 62, all this stuff was like stage plays. They would do it like even early seasons of the Avengers too. It would it's like watching a play. They would just rehearse these, you know. They would do like 15 minutes or 30 minutes even, 25 minutes, whatever. Uh, here's the booklet, and it's got the episode guide. But what I love is they tell us about the restoration. Uh, it's been graded and processed from the existing high-definition transfers of the 35-millimeter tele-recordings. But then it says that there was... Uh, it, the nature of the transfers meant that the image derived from the original 405-line recordings had severe combing. Uh, so digital filtering was used to mask the problem. And I love, I love the transparency there because we don't often get that. Sometimes you do. But I like to know where this stuff comes from. And I think that's probably a good idea because the community, some of you guys, it's probably not you guys. People that watch my channel are, because this channel is, I don't do like controversy. I don't do cancel culture. I don't wave my fist at anyone. If I don't like something, I'm just not going to feed it. You feed negative. When you talk about negativity and you focus on negativity, you feed it. You make it bigger. You're giving it a spotlight. So if you really don't like something, starve it. Don't feed it. So uh, 
some of you guys call foul on a lot of this stuff when it comes to video presentation. And when we have things like this where they say, listen, it had severe calming from the video processing, you know, like the visible lines, uh, and they've applied these filters so that it looks better, then hopefully nobody's going to go, yeah, but it, it doesn't look great. 4K? Should I hold off and wait for the 4K? I don't, that's, I don't think that's you guys, and that's a good thing because transparency is very important, um, and uh, I applaud that blurb on the back of that booklet. All right, uh, real art house stuff here. Bear with me. I'm saving, oh, I'll say this, if, you, if you're thinking about bailing, I'm saving something I think you're going to be interested in for the very last. Uh, see how I did that. I want you here to the end of the video. And this is going to be shorter anyway, because we have a shorter stack. Um, all right, so this is uh, Utama. And I'm not, I have not seen this. I have not, I'm just going to hold this up and you can read what it's about. It was a, the winner of the Grand Jury Prize at Sundance for, what was the category? World Cinema Dramatic. Uh, winner of the Grand Jury Prize. That's a big deal. So Sundance winner. Um, some of this stuff is like, some of this stuff is so politically charged. Every time we get to the end of these Keanu Lorber videos, a lot of these documentaries and these art house films are so politically charged. I feel like I'm walking through a minefield because I have to tell you about them, but elaboration is in, not in my best interest. So this is Brainwashed Sex Camera Power. This is a documentary uh, about a, is the filmmaker is trying to smash the patriarchy of cinema and she speaks about this she lectures about this and she believes that the, the the premise of this is that the camera photographs women differently than the camera photographs men and what does that mean is there a bias is it a judgment and it's all about that with lots and lots of movie clips to that she's using to reinforce her narrative here all right that's all i'm going to say about it uh, this is from Rero Video, A Violent Life, 1960, it was a 61? It's 19, 1962. Uh, this is an Italian film. Obviously, Rero specializes in Italian cinema. And for, you know, they were off the radar for like two years, I want to say. So this is good news that they're back consistently, like on a monthly basis. Since pairing with Kino again, uh, it's just like, we're talking about these almost every single month. So this is... Um, a 1962 film, and they've got uh, interviews with the director. Uh, here, <laughs> hold it up and let you freeze it and read it yourself. The Gang of Four, this is Cohen Media Group, The Gang of Four, 1988, I want to say. Yeah, 88. Uh, it's about the artistic new wave movement. Um, and it's... Uh, Hey, listen to this, guys. Uh, audio commentary by Director Emeritus, New York Film Festival, and Professor of Film and Media Studies, Columbia University, Richard Pena. Uh, that's that's some pedigree right there. Uh, this is... I was looking for the, the language. It's French. Okay. It's a French, French with uh, English subtitles. So here's another one that is uh, very... This is art, art, art film. Um... Memories of My Father. This was an official Oscar selection, Academy Award selection in 2021, I think it was. Uh, this is uh, in, let's see, Spanish with English subtitles. A vivid portrait of a smart, principled, kind man making it another topical Oscar, Oscar contender. Plan A, which is a, I think this is Israeli. Minute, uh, Menemsha Films. Hope I'm, I'm hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, it is in let's see, uh, country of origin, Germany and Israel, and uh, they got some really great pull quotes here. You know, I don't talk a lot about some of this stuff too because my focus is I I personally am a historian, like a studio classics kind of a guy, but. I know a lot of you guys that watch these videos are also into the modern, you know, you're into this stuff and you want to know about it. And that's my role. My role is not to review this stuff in this video. My role is to show you that this is out so you can make up your own mind. Uh, horror, guys. Um, after she died. And I love the way they do. This is the description. A grieving teenager is horrified to discover that her father's new girlfriend looks identical to her, de her, to her dead mother. That's the back of the box. I'm like, yes. You told me everything that I need to know in one sentence. 
It's got a lot of special features here. Um, this is a new film as well. I think this is a 2022 movie. Yeah. So that's cool. All right. <laughs> we got a documentary about Al Sharpton called Loudmouth. Uh, DVD. It's a selection from the Tribeca Film Festival. We have a documentary about the road to the Black Panthers, Lowndes County and the road to the, to Black Power. Um, talking about voter suppression and, uh, you, you know how I say like nothing's new. I say this all the time, like nothing is new. Well, here's a documentary about events from uh, basically 60 years ago that reflects what we're living through right now. Um, I don't care how you vote. I don't care what side of the aisle. If you are, if you think there's an aisle and you fall on one side of it, I don't care. My whole point is that we just do the same things over and over again. And it's through, through, through art and through movies. And cause I think movies are art, um, that we can see those patterns and maybe shake them off and say, no, 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 no. Let's not keep doing the same thing. Uh, all right. Last told you I saved the, uh, something interesting for you guys. I know my audience, the celluloid bird bordello. I got to be careful with this, but this is, they have talked to professional sex workers about how that profession is treated in the media on film elsewhere. That's interesting. So there's the back of the box. You can read it for yourself. Um, Interesting stuff, guys. That is January from Kino Lorber and Kino Lorber Studio Classics and Cohen Media and Arrero and all these <laughs> all these other side projects, side uh, side labels, and uh, it just proves that there is really something for everybody. Anytime somebody's like, "Oh, I don't know, I'm really worried about physical media," I'm like, "Are you paying attention? Are you paying attention? Like, look at the stuff that's coming out from the big spectacle of the missing in action movies in a trilogy box set." to a documentary about, you know, bordellos on film. Uh, it's like anything and everything is coming out right now. So it's really exciting. It's an exciting time to be a fan of this stuff. It's an exciting time to be supporting physical media. I, I often wonder, does some of this, like these documentaries, where do they go? Do they go to streaming? Do they go? I know some of these play at art houses. Are they, are they play festivals, really, like the Tribeca Film Festival and Sundance and places like that. But once they've left there, where do they go? Well, we know they go to disc and once you've picked them up, they're there forever. You guys, I just, I'll say this. Uh, I just watched the Automat documentary from several months back. It's about the death, the life and death of the Automat, the food houses that you would walk into and you put nickels in the slots and you get food. Uh, and they rely heavily on Mel Brooks, fascinating documentary. And I'm like, where does this go? You know, I know it's, it's around, it's on streaming and it's around, but I'm so happy that I own that now. I have that in my collection and that in 10 years, I don't have to go, I gotta track down what streaming service that's on. No, it's, I just have it. I, anytime I wanna watch it, it's at my fingertips now. So we are living in the best time ever for physical media, for film preservation, film access. Uh, let's enjoy it. Let's, you know, let's, let's just, let's live it up. Let the comments of this be like the, uh, like hanging out at the video store. That's what I want. Let's talk about the stuff that we enjoy. Don't fight with each other. You know, let's just enjoy our fandom. Fandom is, uh, is sometimes it's a dirty word, but it doesn't have to be that way. Let's enjoy our fandom. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Until next time, I will catch you later.